Hey guys, Brian D. Anderson here. I know it's been a couple of weeks since my last video, and since then I have shaved the old beard off. Tell me what you think. Think I should grow it back? I, I, I kind of miss it. Anyway, I've been really busy trying to get everything ready for uh, January 28th release of the bar displayed. So, sorry it's been a little while, but I'm back. And today we are going to cover editing. The difference between editing as an independent author and in the traditional world. So, if this is something that interests you, sit back and listen up. Welcome to the queue with Brian D. Anderson. Before we go any further, it's important that you understand the types of editing that are available. If you're not from a literary background, if your education or work experience has nothing to do with the literary world, this can be a daunting experience to say the least. You can end up trying to hire an editor for one job, they, um, thinking, you know, okay, thinking you need a copy editor and what you needed was a line editor or vice versa. and they give you the edits back and all of a sudden you have a you're, you're in a big fight with this editor and, and frankly if that happens it's your fault because you didn't know what you were hiring them for so let's go over the three types of edits line editing is dealing with the actual structure of your sentences your word choices um, Turns of phrase that maybe are being overused, um, clunky dialogue, and how to restructure it to make the um, you know to make the conversation flow better. Words that maybe sort of screw up your pacing. It's about the, you know the, it's about the craft itself at a very detailed level. Now, a lot of people confuse it with uh, copy editing because you know line editing. It sounds like you're dealing with punctuation and things like that, and it's not. They're not there to cor uh, to correct, you know, to put all the to correct your periods and your quotation marks and things like that. That's just not what they do. Um, they're to, there to make sure you don't have a run-on sentence or that you're not using the word "just" 15 times in a paragraph. That's what they're doing there. Copy editing deals with your book at a technical level. It um, looks into the inconsistencies in spelling, make sure that your punctuation, capitalization, all that kind of thing is correct. It also looks for continuity errors, like if a character is five foot ten in chapter one and is six foot four by, you know, chapter ten, that's a problem. So they're making sure also that your paragraph forms and the way you're formatting your book meets industry standard. So they basically deal with all the, you know, think of it kind of like a um, very high-end proofreader who really knows their stuff. And they are there to make sure that you don't get bad reviews for making boneheaded errors that should have been caught. Now, I, I can't say enough about the value of a good uh, copy editor. They can save you from a lot of grief. Um, continuity errors in particular can plague you because once you have the book out there and you find out later on that your character went south from town A and ended up to the north because it was like because you set your um, you know you went on vacation after you wrote the chapter came back and forgot and you thought it was to the north and you wrote and then the book's out there and all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, now a good copy editor would have saved you. All sorts of things like that. A good copy editor will save your backside. So they're very important. A developmental editor is somebody who basically looks at your book as, you know, from a big picture point of view. Um, they're, they're concerned with pacing, character development, world building, and how marketable your work is. If you're trying to reach a certain market, they will 
know how to help you get there. They will know, uh, they, they'll be able to tell you, hey, this chapter here, you know, doesn't really serve a purpose, you need to chop that. Over here, you may need to write a couple extra chapters because this is a part of the story you haven't explored well enough. And they're looking, at, like I said, they're looking at it from this very big picture point of view. Now, personally, I, for my indie work, I tend to use beta testers. And these, I'll, you know, get a bunch of people together to read my work. Uh, something is usually something new, and sort of, I look at all the feedback, and I look for a sort of consensus. And if like three or four of them say the same thing, I know I need to really address that. I, I look at all the complaints, and um, you know, and I, but the ones that like several of them say, I take more seriously. But. Anyway, those are the three types of editing, and um, now we're going to go into my process, and I'm going to maybe help you along into building your own process. Now, my method is simple, but it is effective and it works for me. It's something I've developed over the years. Um, after I've written my manuscript, I go back over it paragraph at a time using Microsoft Word's text to speech feature. Now, whatever program you use, it likely has that feature as well, and I do recommend using it. It gives you a better handle on how your prose is sounding. I mean, sometimes when you read it to yourself, your uh, mind is telling you what you expect to see, not what's really on the page. And even in the robotic voice, uh, you, you can sort of catch where you're going wrong. So after I go back over it another time, I send it over to a fantastic editor and dear friend of mine. You out there, George, you're listening to this? Mr. George Stratford. George is somebody I've been working with since the early Godling Chronicles days, and he knows my writing intimately. I trust him. Uh, you know, I he looks at, he knows my writing so well that if I, I, I'm, he just is, he sees something I need, you know, or should have done, or probably would have done, and he changes it. I can't tell the difference between what I've written and what he, you know, what he fixed. So he goes back through it and uh, uh, sort of polishes it up for me, and then sends it back to me. Love George to death. You see. <laughs> He got a, George got, a, got mad at me because I didn't mention him in a previous video. Now I'm mentioning you, buddy. <laughs> anyway, so I get it back and um, I go back over it again. And th this time a lot more carefully. And once I finish going over it another time, and I um, send it over to a wonderful lady named Dorothy Zamak. She is, um, she writes textbooks for Pearson and Macmillan um, Education. Uh, she's brilliant, brilliant linguist and educator. And she does a copy edit for me. And she actually, she goes the extra mile. She, she's fantastic as well. And once she sends it back to me, I go through it again. See, by this time, most of the you know, any errors have been caught. But still, I get one more person to proofread it. I have a couple of different people I use, and um, whoever's available, get them to do a proofread, make sure I'm, you know, not miss, you know, didn't miss any of the details. That's why when you look at my indie works, they're pretty clean. Um, almost as clean as anything you'll see coming out of uh, the big five publishers. So, then, um, after that, I format it and get it ready for publication. So the, the method itself is not that complicated. So I'm using, I don't know how you would describe it. Um, a line editor, George would be, I guess George would be really me, my line editor, and uh, Dorothy, my copy editor. So, you know, he fi fixes clunky sentences for me, make sure, you know, things like that are straightened out, and Dor Dorothy, big pic you know steps back in big pictures it and fixes all the punctuations and she is fantastic at that I, I, you know I'm, there's every manuscript she finds 1800 2000 just grammar mistakes and uh, you know I, 
I thought it was pretty good until I started working with her. <laughs> you know, and I owe both of them a debt of gratitude. Um, they have helped me uh, reach a level that I couldn't have um, reached on my own. But that's my method. Now the editing experience I have over at Tor Books is different, very different. I work with a fantastic young woman named uh, Lindsay Hall. Hi Lindsay, I know she watches my videos. She is a very talented, creative, and most importantly patient person. And uh, working with me, you have to have a lot of patience. So what happens is I go through the same uh, couple steps that I do with my indie writing as I you know, write the manuscript and I go back over it. But then I you know, go back over it a couple more times. I really concentrating on my prose heavily. I'm not using any kind of line editing, so I'm doing this myself. So um, it usually takes three or four um, drafts before I'm comfortable with sending it over to Lindsay. So Lindsay takes a look at it. it usually takes her a few weeks to, she gives me a kind of a, I'll have, have it back to you by X date. And this, you know, it can be a few weeks, a couple months, whatever her, you know, time, you know, schedule is allowing. And then she sends it back to me. And once she sends it back to me, I look at all the different um, edits that she's wanting. Now, this is a very developmental edit, um, so, so you understand. This is about character development, world building, and all the things that are going to make the book better for the reader. This isn't about my prose. So I go through that and I discuss certain things with Lindsay. Uh, oftentimes we'll have a phone call or two to, uh, to sort of bounce some ideas off each other. If, if say there's a part of the story that really needs some work or, or whatever. And we, I go back through the edits, make the necessary um, corrections. Sometimes this means eliminating entire chapters. Sometimes this means um, writing new chapters with book one. That's ex uh, it was it was a very extensive edit. Not as much with book two, but um, she will make the occasional word choice suggestion, but that's not frequent. And then once I go through it um, and make the the necessary changes, I send it back to her. So then she reads it again and sends me back another um, list of edits. Now, this is when she as a developmental editor will go really deep into the story and she pays attention to all the little details that move everything along and help build the characters and the world and the plot. Now, the edits for the second round is not nearly as extensive as it is in the first, but sometimes it can be a little more difficult to manage because sometimes making one adjustment here affects something down here, and I gotta be very careful about that. So then I go back through the second round of edits, and I send it back to her. Now, there's a chance, I haven't experienced this, but I know uh, people who have that they go through sometimes three or maybe four rounds of edits like this. Um, with um, me and Lindsay have only been through two rounds this way. So I send it back to her and she'll read it one more time and either accept the manuscript or send it back to me. Thus far she's, you know, accepted it. So. The manuscript uh, gets accepted and then it gets sent to the copy editor. In this case, I brought Z uh, Dorothy, my um, indie copy editor. She has come over um, and is working with Tor and working with my stuff, which I was very grateful they were um, willing to do this because I love working with Dorothy and she's a consummate professional. And she knows, and, and you know, it was something familiar and she really knows my, my style well. So then, then it gets, uh, goes to copy editing. Then it gets sent back to me and I go back through it again um, with the, um, making whatever continuity adjustments, um, any other kind of punctuation, spelling, things like that. I get to see all that. 
and I accept all the changes or if there's a reason I should reject a change I reject it but I also explain why I rejected it and then once the copy editing is done I send it back now at this point it goes um, to what's called first pass and these are the proofreaders um, they go back over it looking for any kind of errors any kind of uh, you know just the, the little little things that, that's really hard to catch then I get that back in a PDF form and I um, use the digital sticky notes say hey did you you know this is why I don't want to change that or yes go ahead and change that and these are usually handwritten notes you know that have been copied to PDF uh, to the document on, on a PDF form so it, I don't know if they print it up on paper and copy it or if they use some sort of whatever they do I'm not sure how they do that anyway then I send it back to them and then comes the second pass and the same it's basically the same the same thing they second pass and I go back through uh, go back through whatever notes they've given me either make whatever change say yeah go ahead and change this and go ahead and change that and send it back to them again so this, this is like seven eight nine times that I'm going through a book and by this I promise you I love the barge blade but I, 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 reading any book, even something I've written nine times, will drive you insane. <laughs> but then I send it back to him. That's pretty much it. Then I'm, then I'm done with it. Then the rest it, um, has to do with uh, cover art and, and and all the getting ready for the getting ready for the release. So that's the process I go through um, in the traditional world. And there you go. So hopefully that has helped you somewhat. You know, you're going to evolve and change over time how you complete your book, what methods work best for you. Um, you may sort of use my method and make some adjustments that, you know, to, to, that suits your lifestyle and, you know, your way of writing better. But whatever you do, understand you do need editing I can't stress this enough if you are going to take this seriously and you are going to try to do this for a living you need to find yourself competent editors now those can be difficult to find and in a later video I will go into how to find good editors what to look for in a good editor and how to avoid conflict with editors and how to avoid getting built out of your money by somebody who is unqualified so that's it for this episode and i am so thrilled to be back until next time this is brian d anderson and this is the q don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the links below and Share these with your friends. I want to get to 100 subscribers and then to 100,000. But let's try for 100. Thanks.